All right, Brad and Kyle fans, today we are going to talk to you about bowling on a sports shot. We have a long pattern out here. We get a lot of questions on how to bowl on this pattern, how to bowl on that pattern. Today we have the 48 feet shark pattern. And we're going to show you how to bowl on it and why it's different from your normal house shot. Way different. Stay tuned. All right, Brad, so we have the 48-foot shark pattern out here today. What is, I think, the point we need to get across when people are trying to bowl on a sport pattern is what's the biggest difference for something like this on how to attack it as opposed to your normal house shot? Well, you have two, well, you have two things. The sport condition doesn't necessarily determine whatever length. The sport thing behind it means it's going to be pretty difficult. Say, like a championship-style course versus a golf course versus like a a normal Lynx Muni course. You know, the, the design of a sport pattern is to be uh, difficult, the scores are going to be lower, and the reason is, is basically the oil just gets displaced in uh, different areas of the lane. So for your normal house shot, you're gonna find a lot of the friction to the, to the farther right parts of the lane. Friction, I mean by hook. And if you want more hook, generally you go to the, you move right, you get your ball farther to the right, and it'll provide some more hooks, some more friction. And then the middle part of the lane has some more oil, you get the slide, and they do that because when you, when you miss left, you want your ball to slide. And if you miss right, you want your ball to hook. And you, the, the patterns are designed to allow that to happen to get scores to go up. Now, the sports shot is the opposite. You have hook in the middle. Yeah. They used to call it like a reverse block, I think. But you have hook in the middle, and then you have uh, the oil or the no hook on the outside part of the lane, basically leaving you with uh, very small amounts of miss room. It brings a lot of things into play uh, when you have very small amounts of miss room. You gotta, your angles have to be sharp. Your bowling ball has to be the right one. You got to be in the right part of the lane. You got to be throwing it correctly. And then you can kind of develop a little bit of room. Whereas the house shot is just given to you from the get-go. Now this one in particular is long, okay, 48 feet. So that in general, the lane is 60 feet. Most house shots are 40 feet. And this one is 48 feet, the longest pattern we bowl on. I mean, we've bowled on 52 feet before. Yeah. But mostly, if you're, if you're out there, you're going to bowl on a long pattern. It's going to be from 44 to 48. And just for the extreme, we're going to bowl on the 48, uh, which basically means you're not going to, the ball's not going to hook a lot, and you're definitely not going to be able to miss right. So, Kyle, let's, uh, let's throw a couple shots. Yeah. We're probably going to get him out to the right a little bit just to see. Now, the first thing you want to do when you bowl on a long pattern, on a sport pattern long, is where's the hook? Does it hook from the outside? Does it not hook from the outside? We've seen them both. We've seen patterns be built to where there's still a little bit of hook out there. If that's the case, great. But you have to throw a couple of balls out there just to, for you to, to know. Yeah, so typically on a long pattern, you know, on a house shot, if we were throwing a throw a shot up five, that ball is going to hook and maybe hit the seven pin. So I'm going to throw a shot out up five, just like a normal shot, and let's see how much it hooks. What are the odds this thing just peels back, dude? Probably will. All right, that was perfect, actually. So you can see from there, and this is one of the points we want to get across, when you're going to ball on sport patterns, that ball just went dead straight. Yep. I mean, it, it didn't hook at all. If you were to throw on a normal house shot, that ball is going to hook, maybe hit the pocket, maybe go Brooklyn. So there's no hook out there. So if there's no hook out there, we can't really play there because our ball is too far away from the head pin and there's no hook over there, it's never gonna get to the pocket. So instead, what we like to do typically on this is not get the ball so far right. Kind of act like, I don't know, like 10's your gutter. Even 10 sometimes is hard. So what we like to do on something like this shark pattern is learn how to play the shim, the hold. We want that ball to almost be like fading back to the pocket. We're not trying to get that ball to loop into the pocket. We're trying to kind of get it to fade back. So in order to do that, we got to move our feet way left and keep our angles real close to the head pin. When I say that, again, we're not getting the ball past 10 down lane. We're trying to keep it in. So let's try one of those. Yeah, that's uh, generally a rule of thumb. 
if it's uh, super long and it's slick to the right, you just want to keep your angles tighter. Now, it doesn't necessarily, I mean, it does matter where your feet are, but uh, even if your feet are still out to the right a little bit, you just want your angles to be in. You're gonna have to close your hips, you're gonna have to keep everything tight, and even if you move to the farther left part of the lane, you're never gonna open up. It's just very rare. I mean, if you're gonna open up on a long pattern, you're gonna have to throw it three mile an hour, and uh, it's just no good. So. Yeah. So I'm gonna make a pretty big move. Uh, we're gonna start somewhere, feet around 25, I'm looking at like 19, and what I'm looking for here is my ball to just kind of fade all the way back. Let's see. Dang. So we shaped that one. That one probably got to like nine, ten. It got to like nine, ten down lane. Yeah. But you can see I have hooked now. Now I'll throw a shot there, and the next one I'm gonna get it out to like five. And we're gonna clearly see that when you miss right. So we're just gonna shape the ball more, get the ball to the right. It's gonna oh, work. Now this is all, you know, there are some patterns out there that that wouldn't hook. Uh, it did, and that's a part of understanding what exactly this lane pattern is doing. Is there hook? Sometimes you move all the way in and there's still no hook and you literally have to back it up like a truck and you know, play the shim. So, but we just got a little hook. We got a hook, but the, the thing is that I want to point out is like on that shot particular, um, it hooked early. And you can see, I kept my feet the same, moved my eyes right, and it hooked, it caught that little track area around 10, hooked early and then shaped, hooked too early and shaped too much, that's why we 4-9, instead of having like that gradual fade back. So I would bet that it, when I throw it there, it's either gonna hook immediately or it's gonna go right through it. Yeah, and you know, if you if you look at that hook too much, okay, four nine, right? Was that the lead? Yeah. So four nine. All right, so he got the ball farther out, it hooked a little bit too much, and then at four nine. Now we know that since he got the ball farther out to the right, that that out of bounds comes into play the farther out he gets it. So this one hooked too much, but that out of bounds where it doesn't hook at all is literally right there. Right next to it. <laughs> I mean, you're bringing it into play. Yeah. And that's that's why we like cl more closed angles is it's easier to just completely remove that miss out of your repertoire of misses. Yeah. If you can get your angles tucked enough, then your misses to the right aren't so far right that it brings in that out of bounds. Yeah. Or the Storm Summit's just too good. It just hooks from everywhere. All right, so I'm gonna try to get one to like six down lane. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And I don't care who you are, how good you are, how much you've bowled. You don't want to. You don't want to be in that position. That's what we call jail. Yeah. So like you can like when I, if you're trying to like send it to the right there, those two things are gonna happen a lot. You're gonna four nine and go hook early and go through the face, or you're going to it's going to blow past it and never see it. So like Brad said, we want to change our idea of what we're trying to do for everything to just fade back and play the hold. I'm not going to try to get my ball right. If it gets right and it hooks, great. That's not the idea we're trying to get at. Yeah, and you know, you 4-9. So some people thought that, man, that was a pretty good shot. I just got unlucky. I 4-9. Well, yeah, maybe. It could have been a 4. It could have been a trip 4, whatever. But you got to think bigger picture. All right, if that shot's gonna 4-9 and then my next one's gonna miss, I'm no longer gonna claim that that one shot was just unlucky. I'm in the wrong part of the lane. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just, yeah, remember, you know, your 4-9s and your misses and your splits and stuff, they're telling you something, especially on long patterns. So I'm gonna move a couple left off that first strike we had and keep my angles in. And on this one, I'm really trying to get that ball to fade. So I'm looking around 21, 22, and I, I really don't want a ton of shape down lane. Oh. Yep, just a nice fade. 21, 22 yeah. with the arrows. That's roughly around fourth arrow. That's, I would say if we were to bowl on patterns long, 45 and up, fourth arrow is the most popular arrow. Fourth arrow is the most popular arrow anyway, but we're not playing first, second, and we'll probably start around third 
And then the rest of the time we're spending on the left part of the lane. We don't even, I mean, even if we start out to the right and we get lined up, how long is that going to last? You know, once the front start to, once the oil in the front part of the lane starts to move around, once the back part of the lane gets tight, well, where do you go? Well, you know, and all your opponents are in the farther part left lane, farther left part of the lane. So then you have to make like this massive jump left to bolt them. You might as well just start there. It's just much easier that way. Yeah. So from there, as the transitions, you know, we after a game or two, that's gonna hook early and go through the face as well. So from there, I'm just gonna keep edging my feet and eyes like paralleling in. But I still only want that ball to get to like 11, 12, 10 down lane. I don't wanna, I don't, as we move in, we're not looking to like loop the entire lane. I'm still trying to fade that ball back, fade that ball back. And as that, and you're just gonna have to gradually move left as the front part of the lane starts getting tore up. Yep, and if you're a high rev guy out there and you like to really bend the ball and you get on a long pattern that doesn't necessarily allow you to bend it, it's gonna be tough and you're used to your hips being open. It's obviously going to be tough to learn how to like play a more closed approach. It doesn't take as much rev rate. It doesn't, your eyes don't see this massive angle coming back. It's more of a roll and in front of you. Now, if you're a low rev rate, getting inside like that and playing this shim line can be a little scary as well because you don't feel you have the rev rate, right? You feel like, uh, you know, you get inside and your ball never actually hooks that, wow, you know, my little dinky rev rate, it's not going to go through the pins. Well, it's not about that. I mean, yeah, you might plaque 10 every yeah. once in a while, but you have to play the pattern correctly. And then once you get in there, then you can get comfortable. If you're plaquing 10 on a sports shot, you're in the door. I mean, you're doing well. Yeah. So if you're high rev rate, just know there's some challenges there to get it forward and roll. If you're a low rev rate, just get in there, trust it. Uh, you got to learn how to play left anyway. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for people at home when they're transitioning to the sports shots is you're probably used to a comfort zone that you're, you bowl on the house shot all the time, whatever that is. If you're down and in, you like playing 10. If you like playing 17 here, you usually stay in the same place. Well, when you start bowling on this stuff, you have to play the pattern correctly. If I were to bowl a game up five, as opposed to where I just threw, up five, I'd probably shoot 150. And over here, you know, I could sh I'm, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have the ability to shoot really high scores. But that's simply, I'm the same bowler, it's just me having the right idea on the pattern. So even if you have that comfort zone at home, guys, when you start bowling all these sport patterns, you gotta play them correctly, or else you're just making it really hard on yourself. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial on long patterns. We love long. I mean, just sports shots in general bring in so many different angles, so many different thoughts, so many, they make it really hard and challenging, which is what the sport's about. So if you're out there bowling on a sports shot and you're struggling, just keep watching all the videos and uh, just keep working because it's part of the game. Yeah, that's when bowling begins is on this. Oh, that's the yeah. fun part. There's tricks, it's frustrating. And guys, if you have any questions on sports shots or how to play certain patterns or maybe want to see some more patterns reviewed, Put them in the comments. Let us know. We read them. We'd love to see them. And that's it. Yep. See you later. See you.